Let's call our West Coast correspondent, Jake Longstreth, to get some real dirt on the Doritos Fritos universe. Now, let's go to the Time Crisis Hotline. Hey, Ezra. Hey, what's up, Jake? You're on with the Time Crisis New York crew, Despot and Asher. Oh, cool. Old school. Yeah. Exactly. So, Jake, I, we were just talking about Doritos and Fritos, and um, the fan response to the last show, it was unreal. You know, d- <laughs> while the show was airing, briefly, hashtag Doritos versus Fritos. Wait, what's uh, your position? You didn't yeah. even say. Well, you know, I'm agnostic on everything. Okay. If the Frito Lay company decides that they want me to be the face of Fritos or Doritos, mm. the last thing that I need is somebody digging up an old radio show right. where I, I chose sides. I mean, regardless, you're kind of... Yeah, you're a Frito-Lays boy either way. No, but you're being divisive here, so the company might not appreciate that either way. You're, you're, I guess I am, inviting, I am inviting criticism of their products. Encouraging an atmosphere of okay, intolerance. Okay, I like Doritos. Good. Well said. So, so this is Jake, a very political um, answer. So Jake, as I said, <laughs> the you know people were going crazy. Hashtag Doritos versus Fritos got over two million tweets. It was trending in seventy <laughs> countries. People were going crazy about this discussion. It really struck a nerve with uh, the citizens of Earth. We understand you've been digging a little bit deeper. You got some good facts for us. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, lay it on us. Wait, how about <laughs> you? What do you like better, Doritos or Fritos, man? We discussed this, and I think as a child, I would have gone with Doritos, but as an adult, a self-respecting adult, I would go Fritos. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> Is that just because of, like, getting the stuff on your fingers? Yeah. That's, that's just, fair. It's just the Doritos are over the top. Yeah. That, it's not a good look. What, what if one of your friends pulls up in a Lamborghini and you have to wave at them? <laughs> and all your finger, <laughs> your fingertips are all orange. Or if you get caught licking that off or something, that's yeah, really gross. Yeah, you're just It's not that's, a good look. That's disgusting. <laughs> all right, so Jake, what did, what did you find out about Fritos and Doritos? Where to start? I mean, this is like an epic history, as you might <laughs> imagine. For the sake of brevity, let me just hit you with some bullet points. <laughs> nice. Fritos was invented in the 30s in San Antonio, Texas. 30s. And wow. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, the Lay's Potato Ship Corporation was just getting going in the 30s as well. So two different companies. Yeah, yeah. The Frito Company and the Lay's Potato Ship Company were separate companies. And they, they were very successful regionally. And then in 1961, they merged to form Frito-Lay. And then four years after that, it started to get super global and corporate because Frito-Lay merged with Pepsi-Cola Company forming PepsiCo. Wait, frito Lay is owned by Pepsi still? PepsiCo, yeah. Still <laughs> is. I think they also own like Pizza Hut, maybe Taco Bell. There's like a no, no, no. Some weird. Well, they oh, did okay. until 1997, but right. that's all. That's, that's <laughs> another episode. I don't think I've checked since 1997. <laughs> all right, so PepsiCo, so Frito Lay, they come together. They're their powerhouse. PepsiCo says, you know, guys, we could take this even further. Becomes a global brand. Yeah, as of 2009, PepsiCo comprised 40 percent of all savory snacks sold in the United States. Wow. <laughs> And initially, like, there was this guy named Donald Kendall who was really tight with Richard Nixon. Oh, God. He was the CEO of PepsiCo. <laughs> he was, and actually, Nixon was PepsiCo's company lawyer in the mid 60s. And PepsiCo in the late 60s was thinking of marketing potato chips and Pepsi products together in the same advertisements because, to quote Donald Kendall, Potato chips make you thirsty. Pepsi <laughs> satisfies thirst. So it's like a, 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 a oh yin and a yang. So you're, t- so you're telling That's called synergy. Wait, okay, so you're telling me. So these guys basically invented a certain form of uh, corporate synergy. They give you the taste of a Dorito or a, or a Frito. You get thirsty. Right. Now they're hitting you with Pepsi, which is full of sugar, which is going to totally destroy your metabolism and then make you want to eat more carbs. It's insane, and it goes so deep. I mean, I went down the rabbit hole with this stuff. Normally when people say that something goes really deep, the next line is, I think it goes all the way to the very top. And in this instance, <laughs> it literally did go all the way to the very top to the President of the United States. So I'm, I'm picturing in my mind's eye that a bunch of these corporate scumbags at PepsiCo were like, Nixon, you're a hell of a lawyer, but we need a man on the inside. We want to put you in the White House. And he's like, guys, I ran for president before. It didn't go very well. Nixon, we need you in the White House. We need a strong advocate for Pepsi and Frito-Lay products. And they did it. Dude, you are more right than you know. (laughs) (laughs) 
Kendall, who was the CEO of PepsiCo. So Nixon's ele- elected in 68. Kendall calls Nixon in 1970 after Salvador Allende was elected president of Chile. Oh, God. Who was a, like a, a very Marxist dude. A lefty. And, yeah, he was going to nationalize everything and kick out American corporations. And there was a big PepsiCo bottling plant in Chile. And he was going to boot them out. And then Kendall called Nixon. And so they were old buddies via the PepsiCo board. No. And he was like, this is not going to stand, dude. And then in 73, the CIA helped with a coup to oust Allende. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me literally PepsiCo and by extension Fritos, Lay's and Doritos is pro-regime change. Yeah. I mean, you think about PepsiCo being a, a very powerful American brand. You think about the Cold War, and you think about economic and political imperialism, it makes sense that PepsiCo's right in the mix with the top dogs of uh, politics. It's heavy, dude. Man, is I, it? I, Jake, 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 that's one endorsement you. you're not going to get. I got a question for you, man. Yeah. If you're a peace-loving cola drinker who doesn't want to see Marxist <laughs> rebels getting murdered... I mean, good lord! Is there a cola that we can drink and feel good about? Tropical fantasy. Maybe, yeah, I think Trader Joe's has a <laughs> Joe's. Has a I was line of, um, Joe's cola. What's that? Joe's, Joe's cola. cola. I never even heard of that. It's like the Bernie Sanders of <laughs> of cola. <laughs> right. Maybe Shasta. Tropical fantasy, man. They make a cola. What about RC cola? I don't know. I think RC is probably. Isn't it? RC know? stands for re- oh. really communist. <laughs> what about Fago? <laughs> Oh yeah, maybe Fago is still a regional brand. Is that cola? I don't even know. They, they probably make a cola. Uh, Jake, thank you so much for your in-depth reporting, man. I gotta say that uh, finding out some of these uh, horrifying skeletons in PepsiCo's closet, it kind of makes the whole Fritos versus Doritos <laughs> debate seem a little slight. Ezra, do you have any idea how many different varieties of Doritos have been introduced onto the market internationally? How many? 106. They want to give us 106 different choices of Doritos. But we can't even choose Marxism. We get one choice of ideology, but 106 choices of Doritos. Will you tell us some of the more rare Doritos yeah. flavors? I saw you find a site called, today called taquitos.net, which is sort of the IMDB of snack food. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. Let me just read a few of these. <laughs> There's 106 different varieties, and a lot of these are international. Doritos first degree burn blazing jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> Doritos. <laughs> oh. Doritos second degree burn fiery buffalo. <laughs> Doritos third degree burn scorching habanero. I've had that Doritos one. Doritos Baja Picante. Doritos baked cooler ranch tortilla chips. Dude, there's one that's Peking duck. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the uh, the Doritos roulette chips? Do you guys know about this? Where well, you don't know what you're going to get? Yeah, no, no. This, it's amazing. They launched in Canada and then I think they brought them here but it didn't last very long. They... It's called Doritos Roulette, and the idea is it's a normal bag of Doritos, and then, like, six chips in the bag are, like, inedibly spicy. <laughs> and you just have no idea. They all look the same, so you just eat them, and it became, like, a YouTube cult sensation of people filming themselves eating a bag of of roulette chips, so that you're just eating wow. them, and you don't know when it's going to happen, and then it happens, and they just lose their... You know, it's like those so, ghost you know pepper videos. S- it sounds like there's a lot of creativity going on over at Doritos, yeah, I think they're taking it as far as they can go. All of this is available on Amazon, apparently. There's a real, like, Dorito subculture. So there's just, like, some dudes just Amazon priming Doritos Peking Duck. Yeah. <laughs> by the, by the case. Uh, <laughs> I want that. Uh, I'm reading the review now of uh, Doritos Roulette, and, and it just sounds... <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Jake. Very intriguing. But Jake, I mean, we're talking about the positive side of Doritos. I just want to know, has, has Doritos or PepsiCo ever apologized for getting mixed up in the horrendous things. I didn't see any reference to that. I mean, that would that would be surprising if they did. I feel like those kind of stories, people just kind of like scoff at. Yeah, people probably don't even really believe it. Okay, dude, that PepsiCo CEO is on the Watergate tapes. Oh my God. He's like hanging with Nixon in the White House. This truly went all the way to the very top. Jake, thank you so much for, <laughs> for your in-depth reporting. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say to everybody out there, We've been talking about some pretty exciting flavors of Doritos on the show today, but I want you to go read about these things that Jake's talking about because I want you to think about it. Your consumer choices do ha- do do make an impact. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Real. Anyway, Jake, uh, I'll see you in two weeks, and um, I want to take this discussion even further if it's possible. Would love to.
All right, guys, I got to check in with our West Coast correspondent now, Jake Longstreth. He's been up in the library doing a lot of research for us about the fast food industry and uh, specifically PepsiCo. Now, let's go to the Time Crisis Hotline. What's up, Ezra? Yo, Jake. How you living, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Still out here in New York. How's it going in L.A.? Pretty solid, man. I had my show open on Sunday at uh, LTD Gallery. Oh, congrats. I want to see that when I'm back in town. Yeah, yeah. You got to swing by. Uh, for all our, all our listeners out there, it's a solo painting exhibition I just opened on Sunday at uh, LTD Gallery in L.A. on Sunset near the Guitar Center. A lot of people don't know that in addition to being a radio personality, Jake is a sick painter, but also a researcher of fast food history. <laughs> the past couple shows, Jake, you've been teaching us a lot about the history behind some of these uh, products that we enjoy a lot. We started out by talking about Fritos versus Lay's, then we got into the history of the Frito Lay company. So I'm just wondering, man, like this is kind of becoming like our fast food segment. What do you got for us this week? If you recall last week, we were talking about Donald Kendall. The former CEO of PepsiCo? Yeah. PepsiCo, as you remember, was founded in 65. It was the merger of Pepsi and Frito-Lays. And I told you that story about him being tight with Nixon and then bringing in that phone call <laughs> right. to uh, try to oust Allende from Chile. So I was intrigued by Donald Kendall, and I was like, I bet there's more to this Donald Kendall story. And it uh, turns out there is. All right, so Donald Kendall, CEO of PepsiCo, tell us more about him. This is like some like very madman kind of man in the gray flannel suit kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Born in 1921 on a family dairy farm in rural Washington State, he goes serves in World War II. He shot down near the Philippines, narrowly survives, comes back to the United States, and then by like a year or two after the war, he's working for Pepsi Cola <laughs> as a marketer and a salesman. Okay, and so it's like an amazing kind of image to think about what sort of existential position he was coming from of like going from this life-threatening harrowing experience in war to like being a soda salesman shot down by japanese soldiers yeah. in the pacific theater of world war ii i was reading this interview with him today he was just like bobbing around the ocean and it was just like it's just something <laughs> so it's from Amer that american to history cycle so yeah he's bobbing in the ocean by the philippines narrowly <laughs> survives this the craziest war the world has ever seen yeah. Then he comes back to America and gets a job marketing sugar water. Yeah. Love it. Now, who knows how much <laughs> of this military experience really informed his fervent and aggressive patriotism that he brought as a soda salesman. <laughs> so what happens after World War II in the Western Europe is that Coca-Cola gets in there immediately. Uh -huh. And they lock that down from a market perspective. But in 1959, years after the war has ended, the U.S. is engaged in a Cold War with Russia. And there's no soda market over there. And Eisenhower is eager to open up relations with Russia. And Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, and Richard Nixon, who is VP of Eisenhower, organized the first American trade exhibition ever in the Soviet Union. It was called the American National Exhibition. Oh, I've heard and that's a famous one where they kind of standing next to each other and Khrushchev is, they're kind of like being catty with each other. Yes. And so apparently the night before the thing started, Kendall is there representing Pepsi. Like Pepsi has a trade booth. <laughs> and he goes up to Nixon and he's sort of just like, dude, how can we work this out so you bring Khrushchev over and I get a Pepsi in his hand? We need to make that happen. And sure enough, it does the next day. Nixon leads Khrushchev over and there's like an iconic photo of him holding a Pepsi. And from there on, Pepsi becomes associated with the Soviet Union. So there's no Coke. There's no Coca-Cola in the Soviet Union, but Pepsi gets in there first using the Nixon connection. Exactly. And in 1972, they strike a barter agreement where PepsiCo is granted the exportation and marketing rights to Stoli Naya, also known as Stoli Vodka, which is like the state Soviet vodka company. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So PepsiCo becomes the sole importer of Stoli Vodka, and in exchange, the Soviet Union markets and sells Pepsi Cola. And it's literally a barter exchange where Pepsi Cola syrup is being traded for you know, flats of Stoli Vodka. That doesn't sound very communist. No. <laughs> I mean, 
But yeah, so like the Soviet Union is selling Pepsi Cola. So like the one American product in the Soviet yep. Union is Pepsi. It's the first U.S. company ever to have its product there under the U.S. And let, let's just clarify for the listeners: we're not talking about like late '80s fall of communism. We're talking about no, no, '60s no. full-on Cold War. Full on. And this dude, Donald Kendall, got Pepsi into the Soviet Union. Yes, he did. Wow. This was in the early '70s, and then of course it ends up sort of backfiring in the sense that in '92, when the Soviet Union collapses, all the people there associate Pepsi with the old regime. Oh. Coke comes in there like the day after and just sets up shop. And as of today, Coke enjoys a 20% market share and Pepsi only 13. Because people are like, Pepsi, <laughs> Pepsi is the old communist stuff. That's amazing. Like, yeah, because Pepsi was always, Pepsi in America was always marketed as like the fresh, youthful alternative to Coke. Right. But in Soviet Union, Pepsi Cola is associated with totalitarian communism. Right, right. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, Pepsi marketing of like, the next generation or like whatever that was didn't fly over there and then I love this uh, Vladimir Putin gave Kendall a uh, Order of Friendship Award which is the highest civilian honor in 2004 and there's like amazing photos I found of Putin and like a really old at that point Donald Kendall oh my god I'm sure some dudes are probably like you're doing business with the commies but I bet in his head he was like you know what by providing delicious yeah. Pepsi <laughs> to these communists we're actually, like, making inroads for capitalism. He probably believed he was doing God's work. Absolutely. I mean, that one, yeah, I mean, the story I told you before about him trying to uh, get the president of Chile overthrown was a little more sinister. This one was, like, a little more, like, by the book Cold War in the sense of, uh, yeah, just trying to import, like, uh, powerful American brands. I'm sure his experience as a soldier in World War II informed this like really ambitious and patriotic <laughs> way of conducting business which to us seems like kind of funny and like hard to imagine that mindset today in the global economy right right well that's a cr that's a crazy story jake so for everybody at home next time you sip on a pepsi <laughs> just imagine that you're in the soviet union you waited in line for that pepsi and you walked into a store and you didn't get to choose what soda you drank. And they hand you a Pepsi. And yep. it was Pepsi. And then go drink a Coke and see how that makes you feel. Jake, thank you so much for this incredible research uh, about the intersection of the Cola Wars and the Cold War. That makes me think that maybe we should listen to a little song by Billy Joe called We Didn't Start the Fire because he references the Cola Wars. So let's hear that. You know, man, it was so fascinating um, getting into some of the Doritos flavors last time because, as you told us, there's over 100 uh, varieties of Doritos marketed worldwide. But we were only able to go into about uh, five or ten of them. So could you maybe list a few more for us? Yeah, man, love to. Doritos Chili Heat Wave, Doritos Collisions Cheesy Enchilada Sour Cream. Wait, wait, wait. Was that, that was one? Yeah, Doritos Collisions is when there's multiple... Doritos varieties packed into a single bag. So you get a cheesy enchilada flavor, which I've never seen, and a sour cream flavor, which I've also never seen. <laughs> well, all right, so put it put it all together. What's that bag called? Doritos Collisions Cheesy Enchilada Sour Cream. Okay, what else you got? Doritos Collisions Chicken Sizzler Zesty Salsa. <laughs> Doritos Collisions Hot Wings Blue Cheese Tortilla Chips. Doritos Collisions Pizza Craver Slash Ranch Doritos <laughs> Collisions Zesty Taco Chipotle Ranch mm. Doritos Cool Ranch 100 Calorie Mini Bites Piamita? Dinamita I think it's probably Oh, oh Dynamite Spanish for Dynamite <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's sad.